Okay. Well, I'm excited to be here with all of you today and to be connecting with you um, for the subscriber. Thank you. Um, I originally scheduled this uh, because I had um, over 4,000 subscribers. I now have hit 4,500 um, and uh, the numbers are climbing. And so that's really awesome. Thank you. And if you're here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. It does actually really help me. And um, it lets YouTube know that people want to get the content that I'm putting out. Uh, what I will invite you to do as we go along, depending on what's happening, I will invite you to pop stuff in the chat because I do want this to be somewhat interactive. It's more fun um, and more educational for you when it is uh, um, interactive. Just a few opening remarks. Um, I want you to know that this is a kind of a community chart reading experience. And um, it's so I'm, I'm not going to go into a deep dive into um, anybody, one person's chart. And um, I actually have 24 charts that we're going to go through. Um, I wanted to kind of err on the side of having more today. And what we're really going to be looking at is reviewing themes. So we're going to review themes um, to get a sense of the diversity of designs, um, just because it's really fun to just look at a whole bunch of designs, right? And then also to get the sense of a theme that happens when people have similar types of charts, and then also themes that you can look for inside of a chart. Because for me, especially when I do shorter readings, um, I'm really kind of just trying to zoom in on what is something that's really jumping out to me um, as a theme for this person. And so we'll be pointing out a number of different themes uh, as we go through. And you can, if, we, if we, we're not looking at your chart, I encourage you to just kind of look at what we're doing and you can apply it to your own chart. This is also helpful for you if you want to look at other people's charts also. And um, you can have a little bit of an, a better idea because as many people have share with me regularly, <laughs> this is that they're trying to kind of put all the different pieces together in their, in their chart. And the, and they get frustrated because the thing is, is like, you really don't need to, to try to capture and master all the pieces of your chart. It takes years to do that. So just give yourself a break, be patient. And we always start with type strategy and authority. I hope you know that by now, type strategy and authority. That's what you want to focus on initially, because it's like a portal into the rest of the chart. And if you don't have those pieces down, you're really kind of hamstringing yourself in terms of your ability um, to access the other parts of the chart. So when I do a reading with somebody, I always talk about the, to them about type strategy and authority. A lot of times when people come to me for a, um, you know, for a full reading, they have some of an idea of their, um, what's going on with their, uh, their type strategy and authority, but not always. Very often we talk about authority in particular, but sometimes strategy as well. So we're not going to actually go into that a lot today. I have a lot of videos on YouTube that you can watch about those. And if you want to know about yours, one of the things I am going to do today is um, give you the opportunity to register for a half hour reading with me um, at, um, at half price, basically. It's kind of my gift to you as being part of my community. And it's also for Beltane, which is May Day, which happens on Monday. So um, yeah, so I'll let you know how you can do that later on. But if there's things about your chart that you really want some more support around, it's a really good way to do it. And um, of course, you're always welcome to register for a full reading with me if you want to, which is available on my website. Um, I will uh, let you know a little bit. Um, we'll see how our timing goes, but I do have a, a very... Um, Mm, exciting project that I'm putting together that won't even start until July. Um, but it's really about having a human design community journey together as we dive deep into um, our own human design um, experience as we are living um, our designs more and more and how we can do that together. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. Remember that everyone has the whole chart. Okay. Okay. So you have 
everything in the chart in your energy system. What differs is what's colored in or defined in your chart. And it is a great thing over time. Again, don't try to do it all at once because sometimes I talk to people and I'm like, oh my goodness, they, you know, they, they really binge watch my videos. They read a whole bunch of books and then they're like, I'm so confused. And I'm like, yeah, because it's trying, it's like trying to eat the entire buffet, like in one sitting, <laughs> you don't want to do that. You're going to give yourself indigestion. So what you want to focus on initially, like type strategy and authority, and then you do want to look at your definition because your definition are the parts of the chart that you have ongoing, ready, reliable access to those energies and a consistent, sometimes even fixed way of experiencing them. Now, the thing is with your definition is, is that there are multiple ways to express every aspect of the chart, not just one. There's multiple ways of expressing them. And the way I talk about it is there's the disempowered, which is where you're either rejecting it or you feel kind of at the mercy of that energy. Okay. Then there's the shadow aspect, which is where you are, you're embodying the energy, but you're using it to try to control or manipulate a situation or a person. Now, I know that sounds a little sinister or something, but it's something we all actually get taught to do. We all get trained to do that because we are trained that control and manipulation, often covert, often subtle, is how we stay safe in our lives and also how we create success. So part of what I hope to do with human design, especially in showing these different types of expressions, is to um, help you to see the ways that you've been programmed and help unleash you from that programming so that you can step more into the way that you really feel about yourself and the truth that you understand about yourself. And of course, that truth is going to evolve with your, your life experience as well. And ideally, what we're going to do is we're going to aspire to embody and express the awakened or the empowered expression of any part of our design. So that's what you want to look for when you're looking at your definition, because that's the part you really kind of want to get a handle on. But having said that, your openness is also very important because you have experienced it many, many different times during the course of your life. And some of us are more heavily defined. Some of us are more open. But your openness is very important as well. Some of the keys to my life experience are actually in my openness, not in my definition. So. Having said all that, I just want to say, remember, you have the whole chart. If I'm talking about a gate that you or a, something in a chart that you don't have, it doesn't, you know, you don't have it colored in. doesn't mean you don't have it. It just means that you have a different relationship to it. We have five manifesting generators, um, eight generators, one manifester, uh, four projectors, and get this, five reflectors. Okay, really reflectors are the most rare of all of the designs, and we've got five. So that's really exciting. I was like, oh my gosh, look at all those reflectors. They just kept coming in. So um, we will get a chance to talk a bit more about reflectors today because we do have so many that are here. Um, and uh, and and you will know reflectors in your life for sure because you um, they are 1% of the population, which is, you know, millions and millions of people. Um, so you will know reflectors in your life as well. And they often kind of don't get talked about a whole lot. So we're going to talk about them today. All right. Any questions or comments so far, just pop them in the chat, you know, make notes of your, of your questions. If you pop them in kind of just as the stream goes, I may miss them. You could, let's see, is the Q and a open? Looks like the Q and a may not be open. Uh, okay. So we're not going to do that, but, um, just take a note of it. And then I will ask for questions at certain times. Okay. I hope that makes sense. All right. So I wanted to start out by showing you, uh, the, uh, the mandala because the mandala is so beautiful. And, you know, sometimes people have never even seen the mandala. Whenever I do a, uh, the, you know, a full reading for somebody, then I always will um, give them the mandala um, because it is just a, a snapshot of the whole system. So let me just show you what it is and um, I'll let you know why it's important for today. So around the outside, we have the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. 
Inside of that, we have the different hash marks, which are the lines of inside of that. So those are the lines of the hexagram. So like when you have a gate and it says like 2.1 is the point one is the little hash mark there. Then there are the gates all the way around the edges, right? Here are the gates. They relate to the hexagrams. Inside of that are the astrological symbols. And then here are the hash marks for the gates. Now, um, what I wanted to point out to you is if you look here, you can see gate 54, right? It's lit up. Um, the gate 54 is on the root, which is why this is brown. But you can see Pluto is here, okay? This is the symbol for Pluto. So this is an easy way to see over here on the 60, we've got the, um, the south node and Mars. So when you look at a mandala, you can go, oh, this is a particularly important gate because there's more than one planet there or a planet is there twice, which happens a lot with the outer planets. So we're going to see a bunch of those examples today. And I wanted to show them to you um, so um, we can take a look. All right. So we're going to start with our manifesting generators. And who can tell me what makes this person a manifesting generator? Just pop it in the chat. Anybody know? Mm -hmm. You got it. Sacral to the throat. Sacral to the throat. Yep, exactly. And it's not the throat chakra, just so you know. It's the throat center in human design. They're not the same thing. All right. Motor to the throat. And it is the sacral. Excellent. Very good. Okay. So, yep, yeah, she's got the 3420. Okay. And this is known as the channel of the manifesting generator. We've got a few different examples of that. And so, yeah, she's got power going directly to the throat, right? So the spleen going to the throat is not going to make her a manifesting generator, even though this is a important and powerful channel that she's got going on here. Now, one of the things I want to just point out right away is I was showing you on the mandala where there were places, there were different gates that had multiple activations. So one of the places to look for that in a chart are down here in the outer planet. So you can see, well, here's Chiron. Um, Chiron's in the 24, two times. Pluto's in the 46, two times. Um, Neptune is in the 34, two times. So sometimes you'll also see um, Uranus in, uh, in the same gate. So this is often where you see, that's a very, very common place for you to see double activations. Um, and this person, can somebody tell me what kind of definition this person ha has? Single split, triple split, quadruple split? Yep. 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 Awesome. You got it. Yep. Single. Okay. All right. So here we've got uh, another manifesting generator. Um, oh, Justine just asked about the single definition. Well, let me just uh, demonstrate that with this person because this person also has a single definition. Okay. So single definition is when all of the defined centers are connected to each other. So for example, here, we've got another manifesting generator. We've got the sacral to the throat, um, as well as the sacral uh, um, to the G center. Okay. We've also got it connected to the emotional solar plexus. So we've got a really powerful set of energies here, right? We've got two motors that are defined and they're both feeding the throat and they're feeding the G center. Okay. Do you see how that works? And um, those are the four centers that are defined are the emotional solar plexus, the sacral, the G on the throat. They're all connected to each other. So that makes it a single definition. Um, I want to just point out here, this person has the emotional solar plexus that's defined. And um, we actually have a, a underrepresented in terms of people with that emotional solar plexus defined. But this person, Jesse, has got lots and lots of power heading up um, to the throat and heading to the G center. Um, and so this person, one of the big things this person is going to need to do is to learn how to manage all that energy um, so that they're really in charge of it. And it's not running them. 
Okay, so here we've got another person with the 3420, right? So this is a common channel that we see among uh, manifesting generators, but it's certainly not the only way um, that we see them. Now, what's different about this chart than the three we just, the, uh, wait, the other two that we looked at? Can anybody tell what's different about this chart? Yep, awesome split definition, right? And so... Uh, what are the, what are split? What do you see? Yep. Good, Wendy. Yep. Head and Ajna are one. And also, if you have any idea about how this might influence somebody, this particular kind of split, um, Mm -hmm. Well, two or more centers connected does not make a split. So what we got here is we've got the sacral to the throat, right? Which is what we've been seeing. And then we also have the spleen to the throat. Okay. So we've got these two. And then that also connects the spleen to the sacral. Okay. So this is a constellation. And then this is a constellation. Okay. And you see how there's nothing that is connecting them together. That's what makes it a split definition. Um uh, do, do, do. scattered thinking, hard time talking about ideas. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say scattered thinking, um, at all. Uh, but I would say that it might be hard for them, um, in terms of being able to articulate their ideas because they do not have a connection to the throat. That is true, but they're not necessarily scattered. I mean, this channel is the, is right brained energy. It's the beginning of the sensing circuit. And so it is going to be more abstract. It's going to be creative, experiential, embodied, um, expansive but not necessarily scattered. Now, the thing that might make it a little more scattered is if, because they have an open root. So this person would really benefit from doing some practices that help them get very connected to um, the earth so that they can feel what it's like to have that energy um, activated in them. Because if they get, like if they go and sit on the earth or they do practices that help them get in their root, like the Kundalini yoga practices that I do, that I offer in the community, we always work with the root, right? So those kind of practices would be really good for this person or anybody who has an open root, because it'll get you in touch with that center and it'll help you build the power in that center. Now, because it's open, it's not sustainable. So they're going to need to do it on a regular basis. Okay. All right, good. Um, let me see. Was there anything else I wanted to say? Yeah, that's mostly what I wanted to say about this particular chart. Um, one thing I would say is this person uh, has very little logic in their chart. So they're going to be highly intuitive. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of individual circuitry. So that's going to be something for them to get a handle on in their life. Okay, we'll talk about that more as we go on. All right. So with this person, um, boy, what, uh, anybody want to say something that you notice about, um, this, uh, particular chart? There's, there's one main thing that jumps out to me immediately. Um, I'm just curious if there, if, if that's, uh, there's anything that jumps out to you. So now again, another person with a 3420, right? So we've seen this diversity of people who have that particular channel and who are manifesting generators. Okay, yep, there's a split de definition. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Can you make sure you're muted, whoever's making noise? Thank you. Okay, so what jumps out to me is if we look over here, this is the incarnation cross. So the incarnation cross are the top four gates, right? The, the conscious sun, the conscious earth, the unconscious sun, the unconscious earth. And if you check this out, you'll see that the 3420, okay, is in the incarnation cross. So we already talked about that. But notice that there is also a channel over here, which is the 4037, 
Okay. So that means that these two really powerful channels, so this is connecting two um, motors together, and then this is connecting the motor to the throat. And so this is all in this person's incarnation cross. But as somebody observed, Anya observed, there is a split definition. So what that means is that that those two um, uh, relationships are not uh, uh, speaking to each other necessarily. Right. And so this person may be really on top of this really powerful energy over here, but they're like their emotional energy and their tribal energy that's over here might feel a little less available to them because it's over here in the, um, the unconscious, right. They just might not be as aware of it. Um, uh, but it's also still highly influential for them. Um, let's see. I think there was something else. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So take a look at this, the 61 and the 61 four times in a chart. Okay. So this is another aspect that I always look at, like I said, is multiple activations. So this piece right here has got a whole lot of energy um, shining on it, right? So we've got uh, Uranus and Neptune, Uranus and Neptune, so four times. But not only that, they've also got, let's see, in my notes, I said they, this one? No, that's the, uh, no, I said 30, the 37, 37. So 37 once, 37 twice, 37 three times. Yeah. So the 37 three times. So that means that this gate is even more significant. So one of the themes when you start um, looking at that sort of thing is, is that you're going to go, oh, okay. Just without even necessarily knowing the energies of the planet so much, but um, you, you will, uh, already know that those gates are super important. So for this person right here, that 61 is really vital because there's going to be all of these downloads, these insights, these out of the box ways of um, seeing the world, ways of thinking differently. And Uranus is like, uh, you know, a the kind of known to be the the sudden change person, right? But also the awakener, the enlivener. It's highly intuitive, and um, so when you've got Uranus is lighting up the sixty one, you've got a lot of extra energy that's coming into the intuitive um, channel there. And then Neptune, Neptune is also intuitive, but is a little more watery, a little more emotional. And in human design, we usually think of, uh, you know, Neptune as one of the spiritual themes of your chart. So um, this person has got like all this tribal energy here, but the knowing circuit is big because here they've got this, this um, multiple definitions for the two and the 14 as well. Um, and so, so the 14, somebody said the 14, four times, we have the 14 twice, three times, uh, three is enough. I don't think I see it four times. Um, but yeah, so the, so again, we've got, so one of the themes for this person is going to be how to handle all of that intuitive energy and how to honor it, um, while also, um, acknowledging and understanding this relationship, which is a tribal relationship. It's called the channel of the bargain. And it's about our agreements. It's about our agreements. So all that individual circuitry is it could potentially lead this person a little bit away from uh, their um, understanding of their um, their their kind of tribal relationships. And actually we see the challenge right here. Saturn is lighting up that 37, okay? Um, which is known as friendliness in um, quantum human design. And so Saturn is one of your life lessons. So this person is, um, you know, part of uh, what Karen would call the conundrum. I like to call it a creative tension is going to be between their uh, individual circuitry and their tribal circuitry. And now they're going to navigate that. Okay. Isabel, you did say three times you were right. Okay. All right. Let me just see. I just made it a few notes on these. Let me see if there's anything else I want to say about this. Yeah, no, that's it. No, she's got, so Anna L for you, you really want to look at those gates 
that are showing up multiple times and get to know them well. That's kind of the, the, the main message here. Okay. So now what, uh, what type is this person? And how do you know? Okay. Okay. Manifesting generator. Uh, well, the sacral doesn't really go to the throat via the spleen. Yes, exactly. So usually when we say sacral to the throat, we're talking about the 3420, just not that it's wrong what you said, but just so you know, it can be a little confusing, right? So can anybody say what might happen because the energy is going through the spleen, how that might influence this person? Because it's not directly to the throat. Okay, it's going through another center. So sometimes it happens that the energy goes through the spleen and up. Sometimes it goes through the G center and up. Um, uh, could talk about fear. Mm -hmm. And they definitely have four gates that are lit up there. They definitely could be influenced by fear. Um, what's the other option for the spleen center besides fear? Like when you're in the more awakened experience of the spleen, what happens then? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to kind of ask if you've been answering a lot to see if other people just kind of give it a break and let some other people pop in here. Um, Cause I want as many people to participate as want to, and I don't want them to get into a, a thing saying, Oh, that person's answering a lot. So I'm just going to let them do it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Intuition. Exactly. So one of the things I would say for this person, so they've got intuition right here, the 4323, right? This is the beginning of the knowing circuit. This is a highly mutative, highly intuitive um, energy right here. And, um, and so you want, this person is going to want to like really get clear with that, especially since it's in their incarnation cross and, um, they don't want to let that four fight it <laughs> just the beginning of the logic circuit. You don't want that four, you want the four to be able to kind of ground itself in curiosity. Um, and, and so it can stay open to the intuitive guidance that's coming through here, um, that's kind of one of those those things you always want to look for is how the different parts, um, uh, the different types of circuitry could potentially start to annoy each other or fight with each other. And it often tends to be that the logic is picking on the intuitive. So you want to watch out for that. Um, and also the fear can get in the way over here, right? So uh, can anybody name uh, any of the fears of the spleen? that are being lit up here with the 48, the 44, the 50, or the 32? Ah, the 48, a fear of inadequacy. Mm, I would tweak that. I mean, yeah, it certainly could feel like inadequacy, but because the 48 is all about learning, it's um, because inadequacy could be like, you know, I'm not pretty enough. Um, I wasn't born in the right country, um, whatever, right? There's a lot of ways we can be um, uh, uh, inadequate, but with the 48, um, it's very specific, which is the fear of not knowing enough. Okay. The 48 is the fear of not knowing enough because it's, it's more awakened state is, uh, has to do with um, knowledge, really knowledge and wisdom. So when you're thinking about the fears, they're generally related to, but different from the higher expression of that gate. Okay. So Hind says fear of judgment, which gate are you talking about? Um, Stacy says the fifties fear of responsibility or failure. I, again, so this is in the tribal circuit. Um, and the 50 is all about um, values and taking care of the youngers and, um, and making sure that we understand who we are as a people. And so the fear of the 50 is of letting people down. 
it's like you're here to take care of people. You're so failure again is kind of general. We can feel failure, fear of failure about a lot of things, right? And so with the 50, it's way more specific. All of these fears are way more specific. And so that 50 is um is really concerned about letting down the other people in the tribe. It's it's really it's a very tribal energy. Isabel, 44, fear of the past. Boom, you got it right on. Yep, fear of the past. Um, and the the more awakened expression of that 44 is the um uh, is truth, really. It's truth. And it's about our ability to look back into our past, both individually and collectively, although this is tribal energy. So it often has to do with our family or, or kind of people we consider as part of our community um, and look back into that past and our relationships and learn to tell a different, a, a different story about it. And one that is more true. Great. Okay. Did we get all of them? Oh, the 32. Oh no, you're doing great. Isabel. Um, uh, the 32, does anybody know what the fear of the 32 is? Um, it's not failure, not exactly. It's a little too general. Again, it's a little too general, like saying a fear of, of inadequacy or fear of failure. It's not that those things are wrong. It's just that they're not, um, uh, um, specific enough, if that makes sense. Because the reason we want to know these things is, is that you want to be able to dial into, okay, I have this fear and let's say it's a fear of letting people down. Then you know what to work on. If you're just like, I'm afraid of failing, it's very general and it's hard to kind of zero in on it, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, not fitting in. No, it's not about not fitting into the community. Um, so 48 is fear of not knowing enough. Yes, exactly, Jessica. So the 32, okay, so the 32 is the energy for having a really, being able to hold on to a really big business idea. That's really what it's about. And um, and the fear of the 32 is the fear that somebody's going to take your idea. So I watch out for that one. Okay. Moving on. All right. So uh, what type is this person? Generator? Generator? Yep. Okay. Um, and what kind of definition do they have? Kind of obvious. So we've got one constellation here. We've got another one down here, right? So this person has got two motors that are connected to each other, and then they are connected to the spleen. Um, and so there's a all the power in this person's chart that is defined is down here, lower in the chart, right? And so uh, they also have this incredible 4323, which is um, defining their ajna and their throat. So we talked about this just really briefly um, a moment ago about that 4323. And so for this person, they may feel, they may be getting a lot of downloads. They may be getting a lot of insights. They may be thinking really differently. Ah, it's also in their incarnation cross. But what is going to be this person's challenge? This is kind of an advanced question. So if you don't know, it's okay. But what's going to be this person's challenge in terms of having that 4323 uh, defined and particularly not having it connected to the lower constellation? Does anybody have a hit on that? Hmm. Okay. So the 4323, um, uh, does anybody know what the 43 is the, the kind of um, gorilla name for that? Yeah. Just seeing you got it. Genius. Well, it's genius freak. It's not genius to freak. It's just um, genius or freak. 
And the reason that that is, and this is what is important about understanding this. Yes, exactly. Knowing when to say what, Mary Kate, very good. So the the thing is, is that this, um, this person, because they're a generator, right? So they are waiting to respond. Um, but mostly they're looking for opportunities to, to respond. Um, and uh, so the reason it's named the genius freak gate is, is that depending on when you share it and with whom and, and at what time, what you share could either be considered genius, like, wow, where did you get that? Or what? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. And it's freaky. No. So this person needs to be really aware of right timing for this incredible energy that wants to come in. Um, uh, she also needs to be aware that she's got this 18 here, which is Pluto's in the 18. The 18 is a kind of intense gate. Um, it's the gate of correction in traditional human design or the uh, gate of realignment in quantum human design. And so the thing is, is this energy, this logic here, but especially the 18 could potentially kind of beat up on these downloads that are coming in. Um, so you just want to watch out for that, Heather, that, that that's uh, not happening for you. Cause she's got a fair bit of this knowing circuit, right? She's got this channel. She's got the one, she's got the, the three sixty, um, and she's got the 12. So she's got a fair bit of that knowing circuit. So you just want to watch out and make sure that that 18 isn't always going in there and going, well, that's not right. That's not correct. You know, we need to, you know, uh, correct that, right? Because that can happen with the 18. Um, you also want to make sure you're not doing that to other people. Okay. Um, and so one of the things about this is this is what we consider a big split because it's not going to be super easy for this person to bridge their split. So bridging their split means that they have definition that comes to them that is allowing the different parts of their chart to, um, to hook up with each other, right? Um, so, you know, that can make it a little more challenging when you have a big split. Um, a lot of times people who have a split like this um, really enjoy partnership or they enjoy being sometimes a person with a big split sometimes enjoys being with multiple people, could be small groups, it could be uh, larger groups, be but be because they're more likely to come into contact with people that will help them bridge their split when there's more people around. Okay, let me see some comments over here. Um, to be able to communicate abstract ideas. You know, that's a good, um, that it, I don't know if I would use abstract. I don't know that it's abstract. It could be abstract, but it could also just be friggin' like revolutionary, evolutionary, right? This is where the evolutionary impulse of humanity because starts coming into the chart is right through that 4323, the 6124. Okay. Um, Okay. And then Cassia says to act on what they know as the sacral spleen and root is not in contact. Right. Oh, that could be a challenge for them to act on what they know because they don't have, they don't have any, um, they don't have any energy. Uh, they don't have any power going to the throat. Right. That I think this person is really going to do well when they're around um, groups of people. Um uh, doo, 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 doo. you know, the only difference Lee with ha having the 43 defined and not having the 23 defined is, is that, um, it depends on what else is going on with the person's throat. Honestly, it could go a lot of different ways. Um, but with this person, they've got their 23 defined more than once. What do they got? They got Mars in there and they also have the, their unconscious earth. So they've got a lot of energy for expression. And so if you didn't like, I have the 43 without the 23 defined, I feel very connected to my 43. Um, so it, it, it depends a little bit about what's going on in the rest of their chart, but it might be a little harder for them to express um, their ideas. Okay. So we have another Heather here with another big split, right? Look how big the split is right? Really big split. So for this person, again, one of the challenges that they're for both of these people is, is that they could just be spending a lot, a lot of time in their heads, right? Um, and they might sometimes feel a little overwhelmed by everything that's going on in there. Um, like they could feel, um, uh, you know, like, like they're like, almost like they're two people, 
right? Like this is one person and this is another person, right? One part of them is really grounded, has a lot of energies ready to go, you know, is it can, you know, can engage in life, can, can create and, and so on. Um, and then there's another part of them that's just kind of like, you know, oh, wow, I've got so many ideas. I got so many things going on. Now, the thing is, is that this one is, again, this is the um, right brained energy. Um, and so uh, this is not necessarily a lot of it's not le left brain thinking. Right. So this could this person could be receiving a lot of images. They could be receiving um, energy for like songwriting or dancing or painting or, you know, create what we consider creative ideas, right? That aren't necessarily super verbal. And that could be a little challenging because they don't have the energy going to the throat. Um, let me see. What else was I going to say about this? Ah. Oh, there's two big, huge things here in this chart. Does anybody? Yep. There you go. Wendy, you got it. I was just going to say that. <laughs> That's the other big thing is, is that they're the, they've got the 28. Okay. The 28's here and here and here, and it's somewhere else. Uh, do, 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 do. One, two, three, four. Okay. So the 28. Mm. So, and, the, and then the other one is um, the 47. Okay. 47 is here. So the 47 is up here. Um, and the 47 uh, is part of this channel, which is a really important part for them because they've only got two channels, right? They've just got two channels. So that 47 is really important. And so the, the positive part of having these two things lit up that much is, is that they're both, uh, um, uh, non-logical energy. One is right-brained energy. One is in the knowing circuit. So um, one is more collective, one is more individual, but they're not probably going to um, conflict with each other though the way that you might, if you had more energy in like the logic circuit and the knowing circuit, that kind of thing. Um, so for this person, uh, you know, and this is also the sensing circuit right here. So basically her two channels are all in the sensing circuit. Um, I didn't run circuitry on these charts. Um, anyway, that would require me to do a whole nother thing, which I didn't do. Uh, but so for this person, it's really important that they are going to be really connected to their own, um, uh, their own creativity, their, uh, embodiment, their um, being connected to source and so on. Um, I just want to let you know, I'm not taking any charts in the chat. I'm not taking any more charts or anything like that. So um, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see. I think this was the other thing. Yeah. So for this person, yeah, she's really going to want to, oh, let's talk about the 28 for a second. Well, how's our time? Our time's pretty good. Um, so the 28, you guys have probably heard me talk about this before because I talk about it a lot in uh, the transit reports. The 28 can be a gnarly gate. And so this is, let's see, where's it being lit up? So it's in the South Node, it's in Mars, uh, oh, and it's in Conscious Earth. So it's in important placements. Um, Particularly, I don't know how old you are, Heather, um, but um, particularly earlier in life, um, before 40, uh, but because it's also in your earth and your Mars, um, the, the, the 28, it's in the knowing circuit and it's known as struggle in traditional human design or challenge in quantum human design. The thing I really like to, to share with people is that um, it can be a huge ally for you. I have the 2838 in my chart, when you're willing to embrace the fact that you are on the leading edge of consciousness and that challenges are going to come along when you're on the leading edge of consciousness. It's just part of what happens because you're going into uncharted territory. Um, and so that the 28, um, does anybody know what the fear of the 28 is? We got some sp little spleen going on here. Um, Um, 
Anybody know what the fear of the 28 is? Uh, not really fear of life. It's more specific that to that. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, life has no meaning. Eddie, you got it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could, you could end up feeling like you're dying before you know what your purpose, I mean, it could translate into your life that way or fear of life, it could, you could. Um, but ag again, especially the fear of life or the fear of, of death are, are kind of general. This is like existential angst. This is like, yeah, life is meaningless. Exactly. It's just kind of like, like, because it, it's victim consciousness. Is victim consciousness. And so, you know, life is coming at you. Um, it, it, you know, you're at the mercy of things coming at you. Life is going to be a struggle if you live your life that way. Right. So for you, Heather, you really want to get a handle on that um, is uh, uh, because you want it to, you want to turn it into an ally. Okay. All right. And we have got another generator. Um, why is this person not a manifesting generator? No motor to the throat. Exactly. Very good. Okay. And, um, what, uh, gate do they have, uh, lit up in their chart the most? So you do not have to have the sacral connected to the throat. You can have other motors connected to the throat, just so you know. Okay. You can have any motor connected to the throat and become a manifesting generator. Could be the will center. Could be the emotional solar plexus. Could be the root through the spleen. Um, 64, four times, bing, 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 bing. And anybody uh, want to venture a guess about the 64, the quality of the 64? and why it's important. So the 64 is um, the beginning of the sensing circuit. Okay, now this person has got an interesting configuration up here in that they have both the 64 and the 63 lit up, right? So this is right brain energy. This is left brain energy. Um, and when you have the, um, uh, you have both of these lit up, it can be an ideal situation because you, we want to have both our left brain and our right brain active and engaged and able for us to, to connect with, right? We want that. Um, you just want to make sure that you have your left brain energy in proper alignment so that it doesn't take over and um, squelch or reject your right brain energy. Because unfortunately, that's kind of how we're taught in Western culture. I think people maybe in other cultures may not be that so way so much because a lot of them are more honoring of creativity and embodiment and experience and ceremony and ritual and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like many other cultures are, are much more um, honoring and engaged in, in that part of, uh, of our intelligence uh, that in Western culture, we're generally sent away from that. So for you, Jim, I would say you want to just make sure that you're using all of your faculties and not let this um, 63-4 dominate you um, because you've got a lot of intuition. You've got intuition here. Again, we've got that 43-23 keeps popping up, right? And so the 43 is here three times. So that means there's going to be a lot of energy. Um, again, that those kind of breakthrough. I think I attract people with the knowing circuit. It just seems to be the way it goes. <laughs> Um, yeah. And we've got the 4323 here in the nodes and, um, yeah. So for this person, you know, you want to be able to really honor like this beautiful 12 coming off the throat, all this knowing circuit, right? Lots of intuition, lots of knowing circuit here. So, um, for Jem, you're going to want to really kind of honor that part of yourself and, um, Ah, and tell stories about it because it's your number one gate is the the divine storyteller here, right? 
And so you want to make sure that you're allowing yourself to use story as a ally in both creating your life the way that you want to, and also for um, uh, your community because it's collective energy. Okay. Okay. All right. See, uh, what is the motor or what is considered a motor? The four motors are the sacral, the root, the will, and the emotional solar plexus. Okay. So just is it, what jumps out to you about this chart? Is there anything you just go, wow? I did. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wow. You're welcome, Jessica. Yeah. All motors define bingo, right? And everything is connected. Exactly. Both of those things. So here are the motors. These are the four motors. Okay. So the sacral, right? Which is what makes her a generator. Um, and then the root center, the uh, emotional solar plexus and the will, they're all defined, right? So this person, as long as they are taking care of themselves and they're living their design, um, they're not trying to initiate too much because they're not a manifesting generator or a manifester, right? They're really living in response. Um, that they should have plenty of energy for everything they want to do. Lenore, I don't know if you're on here or not, but um, you can chime in and see. And then, and then it, they're all connected. So we've got a superpower energy going into this G center. Okay. It's going into the spleen too, but it's really going into this identity center, center for identity, um, direction, love, and lovability. Now, a key for this person is going to be right here, this gate 10. Okay, because all of this power that's generated down here is going to come into the identity center through the 10. So we've got uh, Mercury over here lighting up the 10. Is it the only one? I think it might be the only one. So Lenore, for you, you know, your, the, your relationship to yourself and your self-love is going to be really vital for you to be able to make the most of all of the power that you have. Because if it goes into, so the shadow of the 10 is blaming other people for stuff. You know, it's like not taking responsibility and finding blame in other people. And then the um, disempowered is when we're uh, really kind of blaming ourselves, beating up on ourselves, right? And, and that leads us to attract blame from other people too. So you want to look at that for yourself and just make sure that that 10 is really um, aligned and that you're really loving yourself and you can use your, your beautiful 26 here to make sure you're in integrity with yourself because the 26 is an energy of integrity. You want to be able to step into your queen energy, which is that 45. Um, and just really like allow all that power that you have to help you be more regal in your life. Mm, yeah. Um, Love gate 10 when uh, taking on, I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. <laughs> Would you rewrite it? If you, it's something you want me to get, cause I didn't understand that love gate 10 when taking on. Okay. I don't know what that means, but thank you. <laughs> See, was there anything else I wanted to say about this one? Uh, yeah, no, we, we pretty much got it. All right. So this one, again, I think we're coming to towards the end of our generators. We just have a few more. We're going to bop through these so we um, uh, have enough time. Okay. So anything jump to you, out to you about this chart? Well, the main thing here is split definition. Yep, exactly. And it's a little hard to tell that it's split definition. But one of the things that's different about this one is, is that they have lots and lots and lots of opportunities to bridge their split. Okay. So um, all of these, any of these, right, the 15, the two or the 29 could help them uh, bridge their split. So that's much easier than for people who don't, um, uh, who have that bigger split that we saw before, right? So this is the kind of person, um, April's the kind of person with a split definition who could easily connect with a partner 
uh, who has the 15, the two or the 29. And then all of a sudden all her energy gets going too. And then she would have something not dissimilar to what we saw a minute ago, because she, she would have three, all three of her motors would be connected to each other. And all of that energy would be going into and through the G and um, she's got this beautiful 46 and all, all the gates of, of the, the uh, G are beautiful, but the 25 is um, what she's going to be moving into after 40 because it's her North node. She's going to be moving into that more and more. And this is known as the channel of the shaman or the priest or priestess because it's a very beautiful energy, spiritual energy to help initiate people into higher consciousness. Um, both of her channels are individual circuitry. So she's going to have a lot like plus all this knowing circuit, the 24, the 23, the 14 twice. This is all knowing circuit. Again, another person with a lot of uh, intuition. Okay. Well, here we got another generator. Um, so what's different about this chart? Does anything jump out to you about what's different in this chart? Just just it, literally visually looking at it compared to the other ones we've looked at so far. Or anything that you just go, wow, I haven't really seen that so much in, before. We've got another split definition. Anything else? No? Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, but we've seen sacral to the G before. We've seen a number of those. Okay, what really jumps out to me are all of these checkerboard gates. Look at all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so when I see that, the first place I look is down here lower in the chart. And sure enough, right, we've got this happening in the three um, most outer planets. Um, and when you see this again, what tends to happen is, is that there are fewer gates lit up in a chart and the ones that are lit up are, uh, are being seen multiple times. So this isn't it, like, so when I see a chart like this, I'm immediately interested to go, oh, okay. So here we've got individual circuitry. Here we've got tribal, here we've got individual, here we've got tribal, here we've got individual and here we've got collective. So this person's got it fairly evenly spread out among the different circuits. Um, and then because they have a split definition, right? And so they're going to have the power um, going to the G center. Again, it's going through that 10, right? So this is another person. So Mars is there. What else is there? Uh, where's the 10? Ah. Conscious Earth. So this is really important energy for this person to make sure again that that energy of that ten is uplifted and and um, you're really really loving and taking care of yourself um, because that'll enable you to utilize the power that's coming into your G center, your identity center. Um, and if you if you if you're not grounded in your self love, you know that Mars could turn more into the to the god of war, and it could be the war against yourself, or it could be war against other people. If you if you're getting into that blame game, so you want to watch out for stuff like that. Um, here we've got this, uh, this connection between the, the 18 and the 58 Neptune's in the 58 and, um, yeah, we got that 28 again, right? So what do you want to do when you're looking at a whole chart like this is you kind of want to go, okay, how are these things talking to each other or not talking to each other? Where tends to be the tension points that this person might have? So I just mentioned this one about the 10 um, and the different gates. And so for you, when you're looking at your own chart or you're looking at somebody else's chart, that's what you want to start looking for is where is the creative tension in the chart? And this person's going to have it just right here between in the split definition. Although again, it's a small split. There's many, you know, plenty of opportunities for this person split to get bridged. So that's a good thing. Um, it can get bridged here and here um, and here. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. What do we got here? You're welcome, Christina. Okay. What channel 18 to 58 does to a person? I don't quite know what that means, Jessica. Uh, no, they don't have nine centers. Eight, yeah. Yep, 
of eight centers. Um, what else? Yeah, so there's a lot more definition here that we see triple split. There you go. Yep, good, triple split. Exactly. Um, what does a person with a triple split want to do in their life? How can they maximize that the best way? Anybody know? Yeah. You want to be able to be not so much meet people. You don't actually need to meet people. You just want to be in a situation where you're around people so you can pick up their energy. Um, I used to be in a relationship with a guy who was a triple split, same thing, had eight defined centers and no, he had seven defined centers and he always wanted to be in groups of people. Like he always wanted to go to events. He always wanted to be in situations where, you know, there were lots of people around. Um, and, uh, Actually, I didn't know human design then, and I didn't know why he wanted to do that. And I'm a two, four, so I'm a hermit. So I was kind of like wanted to be home more, but okay. So this person, so um, France Lise, you're going to want to, it's particularly if you start to feel, because people who have splits um, sometimes start to feel like, like they're not, they're not in integrity with themselves, right? They can almost feel like they're different people or they act different ways at different times. And when that happens, it's really good to get your, your um, splits bridged for, um, for a while. Okay. Now somebody with this much definition, I don't know, France, Lise, I don't know you, but somebody with this much definition could potentially have challenge. They could be kind of stubborn. They could be a little bit, um, I don't, they could be stuck. It depends, particularly if they don't get their bridges uh, their splits bridged, they could get kind of stuck, but they also could just have it, find it hard to change because with this stuff, def much definition, remember what gets defined, how you, your, your definition gets, con uh, gets conditioned, gets pretty set. Right. And so um, I have a friend who actually has all nine of her centers defined and she said, yeah, change is really hard for her. So if you know somebody like this, or you are somebody like this, you really want to give them a lot of time to be, um, to be making changes because it's not that easy for them. Um, okay. So here we've got an opposite, right? <laughs> so here we also have a lot of the checkerboards, right? So that immediately is going to tell us that these are major themes for this person. Okay. So that's a place that's really easy to look at. Um, and then, uh, that they only have two centers to find, right? But the two centers are both motors. Um, but one of the big things for this person, and we're moving into, um, you know, I'm going to go past 1.30 uh, just because I've been having fun talking about the charts um, and there's a lot of them. Um, so just so you know, uh, if you need to go, uh, but hang in here with me, come on. Um, this person with this much openness, right? They're going to need time alone. They're going to need time on their own. Um and they are uh, going to need to do energy practices on a regular basis so that they're clearing other people's energy out of their field. And they're just making it so that the only energy that they're really in is their own energy, right? And because that up that open G, we haven't even talked about the open G, um, but because that up that open G, they're going to want to have a lot of heart opening energies uh, or heart opening practices. They're also going to energize that heart so that they are able to um, really experience their own heart energy and not be carrying around other people's identity. Right. So that's one of the things about having an open G is you can get lost in other people. And with this much openness, um, this person could get uh, um, uh, could look, get lost in other people. I have no idea how to say this name. Arachi? Arachi? I'm not sure. Um, so that's one thing that um, you're definitely going to want to do. And uh, Michelle, as you just said, lots and lots and lots of spleen gates, right? So, um, yeah, and actually Jacqueline, exactly. Um, reflectors, we're going to get to reflectors in a minute because we've got five of them. Um, and, uh, so yeah, this is one of the things this person is going to really want to get a handle on is to make sure that they are on top of, uh, that splenic energy so that they're not living in fear a lot because they could be. 
Um, yeah, but if they can get really grounded and if they have a grounding practice, right? Cause you notice they have an open route. They want to have a grounding practice and then they want to have a practice where they're really, so this is why I offer you guys the Kundalini yoga um, classes that I do in the, uh, in the uh, portal because so many people have these situations and doing energy work like that can really help you be on top of, um, of your own energy and in command of your own energy. Um, so that you're not at the mercy of other people. Uh, so this is just a half hour reading. Usually my readings are like 90 minutes. Um, so this is just a half hour reading. Um, but uh, I wanted to just, this is just like a, a, Beltane, a Beltane blessing for you as we move into full spring. And also as a thank you for being a part of my community. And also I like to do it because yeah, uh, one is I know that there are people from different countries and the current, the exchange rate and all that, sometimes it makes it prohibitive to, to buy a full reading. Um, and I also get to know you. So I really like that because I get to meet people when I do this. So um, I love that, that part of it as well. 